sorry the name wrong, but I uh, have uh, listened to a speech here about uh, curing depression. And I jumped in because uh, I have one of these uh, democratic solutions to cure depression. Uh, I think it was Mr. Chimajano who spoke. Uh, it's not on the uh, internet yet, but it will be. And it's about uh, one need uh, civil rights activists do have to follow their work. It's the need for a strong motivation. Competence is not enough. And to have a strong motivation to do a work in the social environment, uh, there are some more needs. It depends on the nature of the work you're doing. Sometimes the work you're doing takes to see positive endings more time than your own life. So uh, this might be a source of depression. Uh, if you don't have positive feedbacks, you tend to lose positive motivation and you develop sadness. So you start looking for some help, for some uh, positive reactions around you. You look for friendly faces. Are there any friendly faces here? Uh, to better understand me and my feelings as a social activist, or at least person pretending to be such, uh, I would like to show you, if this works, a young African-American lady. She is now going to school, so at least this is what she was trying to do. And this was happening in the United States, in a town called Little Rock. She was one of the nine African-American students trying to implement what was recently changed in, in the States, meaning the desegregation of politics. So, she was trying to enter a college which was all white college. And the community was extremely curious, the white community in this town. So she was surrounded by hundreds of persons, military, officials, and civilians, all white. Extremely curious. She was scared, she was 18 years. <coughs> she was looking desperately <coughs> for a friendly face around her. She saw a woman who was not shouting, shouting, lynch her, lynch her. And this woman was her hope. Uh, it wasn't a friendly face because the woman spit on her. So that's uh, Elizabeth Eckford story. And this was happening in 1957 in the United States. The nature of the work we are doing here is more or less similar with what was happening then there. But Elizabeth is today in her 60s, if she lives still. And she already has a president whose name is Obama. So she probably leaves the sentiment as a fulfillment of the work she has started 50 years ago. I can't feel this yet in Romania when involving myself and my colleagues in a very enthusiastic, energetic field of fighting against Roma discrimination. It's not easy to help to find solutions in this field. Because the story of Roma, which is more or less similar to the African American story, starts when they left home. They left home, meaning uh, northern India, about 1,000 years ago. And they are still looking for a home. Uh, they left India for a longer trip, and they picked Europe as a destination. Europe as a destination. And uh, they reached Greece. And they were so funny, or strange, or uh, colored or anyway, when the 
Orthodox Church, uh, the, the Orthodox Greeks look at them, that the Greeks declare, declare them as non-touchable, not to be touched. Atinganus. Atinganus, a Greek word. Atinganus, a Greek word. Quickly translated in Romanian as Tsigan. Tsigan meaning not to be touched. A Greek word, Roma population. And the Roma continued to travel and reach the territory which is today called Romania, and we are very proud of it. And uh, considered that this could be their home. And uh, they started their career in this region as slaves. It wasn't a successful career because it took too long. It took about 500 years. When finally they were freed, this meant good news and bad news. They were freed, which means you have freedom to do anything you want, to be equal to the rest of the citizens living in the same country with you. Bad news was that they were lost the only thing they had as slaves, food and home. And they were exposed to search, to a continuous search for solutions to survive. Here they met the thing which uh, was not uh, controllable by laws. Because if the slavery was abolished in 1886 or so, the mentality of the majority of the population couldn't be changed by laws. So they had in front of them a huge wall of antipathy, hate, hostility. So they were refused the common tools for social adaptation. Okay, Roma are creative. And they look for original, new, marginal solutions. Which sometimes were extremely marginal, which means which meant illegal. This didn't do anything more but consolidate the perception the Romanians, Hungarians did have about them. Which means, it's a uh, simple portrait, it has only five qualities, they are thieves, they are lazy, they don't want to go to school, they are dirty, and they sing very well. <laughs> so, uh, they kept living this kind of life until today. We have today better laws, we have institutions created to fight discrimination, but in spite of the, all these changes, positive changes, the reality means I visited a small village near Sibiu. Sibiu used to be, two years ago, the European cultural capital, which meant for Romanians something to be very proud of. Fifteen kilometers far from Sibiu, there is a village with a Romanian mayor, Romanian living in nice homes, which used to be German, <laughs> and at the end of the village started, if you want to make a visit in a medieval era, you can go there. Uh, So-called homes, no electricity, no water, even the road which was repaired by the mayor ended where the Roma homes started. 15 kilometers far from the European capital. European culture capital. So we are living in a uh, country which is split in two distinct eras. We live in a civilized Romania, you heard the, the previous presentations, and in the same time we agree to live near a population which is kept in extreme poverty, and we had performed the research this year, 
95% of the Roma population is poor. 75% of the Roma population lives in extreme poverty, in spite of what the majority of Romanians believe about them. The changes in this field, trying to push the society together to abandon this schizophrenic existence, is extremely inefficient. In my opinion, this is why I'm impressed, this is why I'm here to be cured by friendly faces, your friendly faces. You can see the, the changes in social distance which were happening in seven years. It, there are two researches performed with the same instruments. And you have at the right end persons, persons who declare that they will never accept a Roma person in their families. Never accept a Roma person in their families. On the other hand, these are the tougher guys. They will, will never accept Roma in Romania. The percents improved, you could say, from 28 to 20 in seven years. We work on this. We want to fight stereotypes, negative stereotypes. We work with journalists, trying to convince them to visit Roma communities and to cover the reality of Roma existence in their newspapers or other media outlets. What happened was that their articles were extremely bad received by their readers. If you look on the sites of the, these publications, we, you will discover the uh, comments of anonym Romanians say, saying simply, a bullet is cheaper. So you start being depressed, but not yet, you still have some hopes. And you look, okay, which sources of friendly faces you can discover? When the non-Roma population considers in 90% the Roma <coughs> cigar. And you look towards the Roma population themselves. They have a number of good NGOs, they have a good elite, but it's nothing as compared to the dimension of the problem. And the dimension of the problem discouraged the Roma themselves. Look how many of them assumed the name of Tsigar Gypsy. 66%. Look how many of them do not speak Roma anymore. 53% of them speak only Romanian. So you lose one of the major potential allies to bear this fact, the Roma population itself. As I said, a number of Roma activists, but it's less than necessary. Okay, when to look for other friendly faces? Let's look to the government. <laughs> it's okay, the government is okay, uh, because the government is generally led by politicians. The politicians have two positions considering this topic. They are or indifferent, which is excellent, <laughs> or they are irresponsible. They promote hate speech. So I prefer the neutral ones, uh, which means they don't interfere the good guys working in the government and trying to push things. And this is happening since two or three years. So some events would be seen. But what if all these efforts done are smashed down after an incident in Italy where a Romanian citizen, probably a Roma, killed an Italian lady. And Italy reacted strongly. They were in, in a political, special political environment, elections, 
and they considered this topic as being a good one, an electoral one. So they accused Romanians of being criminals. This produced a huge reaction in Romania. Romanians declared furious that they are not criminals. Roma people, sorry, Tsigans are criminals. Even some Roma leaders declared that the guy who killed the lady was not a real Roma, but something between. <laughs> so, uh, you feel disarmed because what happened after this event meant a jump backwards with 10 years, all our gains, which were already measurable by statistic instruments, the improvement in the speech of the media was lost, erased. <coughs> Depression is close, looking for friendly faces. So, me and my colleagues were really depressed. We decided to take a break. Probably this is the best solution to take. To take. It's, uh, so we considered a good holiday to be done in a summer camp with 400 Roma kids. 400 Roma kids always can give you some uh, comfort, you would say. Let's test how, how you are perceiving Roma, how many stealing happened in these summer camps. Zero. What did we want to do, in fact, with these kids? We were trying to compensate this phenomenon, to recuperate if the adult people are lost. The kids could relearn their ethnic identity. They could regain trust in their ethnic identity. Because they forgot, they don't know, their family almost do not, they do not encourage them to keep their Roma identity in front of them. This is a condition. We invited these kids during the summer for two weeks in the summer camp, and we almost killed their joy because we had the idea to uh, make with them some lessons about Roma history, about uh, uh, Roma cultural uh, behavior, etc. Criminal. For kids, kids uh, five to eight degree, 10 to 15 years old. It was some. So we said, okay, let's give them, let's give them some toys. So they learned when they arrived in this place that they will make a movie themselves. They will make the uh, costumes, they will be the actors, they do the music, they do everything. Okay, not everything, because we need some technical assistance. So here we were, 70 serious activists, depressed activists, 400 kids, trying to do together a serious thing in a funny way. What happened was what I was looking for from the beginning. We had at the end 400 smiling faces not only friendly faces for us, which gave me and my colleagues enough energy to work for the next hundred years in this field. And I would like to let you follow some images of the movie. În timpul celui al doilea război mondial, romii au fost transportați în Transnistria. Yeah. 
Au murit 36.000 de romani.